You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, our resident doctor. Some of you guys, this is your only doctor, Dr. Oz. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks for having me back. Welcome About to start back. the ninth season of his show, the Dr. Oz Show. Starting off with Charlemagne, who graced our stage yet again. Okay. Thank you for having me again. You were, you were good he, at it. Did he bend over and cough this time? He did. I, and I collected his copay afterwards. <laughs> you, you, you do know why we use two fingers during rectal exams? Why? You guys don't know that? Why? The, the reason doctors use two fingers on rectal exams is to get a second opinion. Oh, but Doc, I just want you to be know that. I thought it was because it feels better. Doc, I just want you to know that if I ever let you finger my butt, that is the copay. All right? That's, that's <laughs> the copay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, in addition, it's, you also have a book, Food Can Fix It. Food Can Fix It. So I haven't written a book in 10 years. I, I have seven New York Times bestsellers. I love writing books. Wow, it's always it's fun for me to do. But I, I stopped writing them. I was doing the show, obviously, and you know, I still am. But it, uh, but I've also realized that science has advanced so much. There's so much new information about mm -hmm. specific problems that can tr get treated with foods. That it was the right time to put it together in a book. And but, but you know, years ago, we all knew food was important, but we wouldn't treat it like a medicine. But when you walk into a grocery store, you're walking into a pharmacy. Right. And that p epiphany for me it got me to think. Okay, I'm gonna put down all the main things you complain about. Fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you if you Google and you can do it right now, why am I? Right. How will Google autocomplete that question? Why am I? Why am I? Yeah. Tired. It'll probably say tired. It'll yes. probably say... Uh, depressed. Depressed. Yeah, First absolutely. First three are tired, oh. fatigued, horny is not one of them. Oh. The, uh, but I, it seems like an existential question. You're asking mm -hmm. about why am I here? You think you'd be asking that. Alive. Thing. Alive? Yeah. No, it's why am I so tired? So I want to give you food fixes for that, for mm -hmm. losing weight, for feeling more energy, for, for not having pain, the, you know, looking better, all the things we chronically struggle with. And then I thought, you know what? If I can make it into a food plan and give you recipes that, that are... Where's the book? We don't have it. Yeah, don't have God, it. darn it. We're getting this it is right what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Charlemagne. <laughs> I got my book right here. It's called Black Privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Opportunity to come to those who created. It's a New York Times bestseller. It but is. you know what's okay. interesting? Because we do, <laughs> <laughs> we do have that juice bar, and people come in all the time, and they'll ask me, like, what kind of juice should I get because I'm exhausted or I'm sick? A lot of people come in, and we have a cold remedy Common. for them. Yep. But what it is is it changes people's whole lives. Like, people will have high blood pressure, yep. and they'll come to the juice bar and be like, what should I be having because... And it really will change your whole life. Well, People take that as an example. Mm -hmm. So you, at your juice bar, when someone asks you for uh, something for blood pressure, you give them two things probably. You give them real vegetables, which have potassium in them, mm -hmm. as opposed to salty stuff that you'll, have to, you'll otherwise get. Salt dries up your blood pressure. Potassium is the antidote to it. Uh, and you give them real food, which relaxes them, because it generally will do that. And both those things have an impact on your blood pressure. So when, you, when we talk about... Uh, your, your juice bar healing people. It's not like you're not going to use medications ever right. again. You're not treating gunshot wounds with the juice bar, right? <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> but but for chronic ailments that plague us day in and day out, for women when they go through the, their period of the, at, at, during the month, right? That when they're during menstruation, these B vitamins help with PMS. Right. Well, why not take advantage of that? Mm -hmm. If now that you know that's true, if you have that problem, then make sure you get some extra B vitamins by eating the foods or the smoothies that get you there. And there's certain things I know if I'm about to go work out, I know okay, this is a good one for me to get you know, the revive just yep. to kind of get myself together. And I really don't ever get sick. And I feel like part of that is because of my diet. Well, it, it, just for you, since you mentioned workout, they the, go caf to book. the caffeine makes a difference. Food mm -hmm. can fix 100%. it. 100%. Now, yeah. now you see the yeah, documentary. Can I put this next to your book on the show? Yeah, let's do it. Now you Food see the documentary, What the Health. Everybody's been talking about it. What did you, did you see the documentary? I had got the show. Now what did you I think about it. that documentary and, and, and the foods and a lot of people going to And all these fake there. vegans that are out here now. So yeah, Sean doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care at all. Okay. Gonna fall. You're all good. Right. No, it's moving. Okay. It's, it's still moving. Uh, <laughs> what what the health? I mean, listen, it, it does sensation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll hold, you. It. I'll hold Thank it. I got you. <laughs> this is what I love. This is a classic guy move. I told I, him. I, it's I got moving. it. I got it's it. I manage. It's not a problem. You're warning him all the time. Envy's just laughing at him. <laughs> Just he knows he's going down. I mean, this, is, this, is, this is the state of the world. Right. Women watching guys do stupid things. I just let it happen. Oh, man. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. After a while, Jesus Christ. Tell them once, tell them twice. After that, it's their fault. Well, that's what, that's what ruined the pre last presidential election. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sat back and watched people make stupid decisions when you should have just let the woman handle it. Right. So again, what the hell? What the hell now? What the hell um, is provocative in a couple of things. First of all, it does highlight that government. Um, is influenced quite a bit by, by financial incentives from mm -hmm. lobbyists and from people who buy their way into good graces. We have things like, you know, food pyramids, which maybe get tainted. They certainly historically had been by manufacturers of things like, you know, milk and meat. And I'm not against milk and meat. I just want to have objective, honest, 
the tell me what I'm supposed to do right. charts, not ones that may have been influenced. Um, and it's it's it is interesting to hear the accusations because a lot of them I couldn't validate, mm-hmm. but there are accusations about the fact that milk is a problem for kids and we shouldn't be eating other animals' milk or drinking right. it rather, and that meat is a is a problem causing heart disease. And I do think that it's better if you're not eating meat if you have heart disease. What but, about milk? So the the data on milk is really mixed. Um, it, you, it's very difficult to say that milk is bad for kids or for adults, frankly, but. It, there are some articles that do say it's mm-hmm. a problem. So you're sort of left thinking, okay, you got a, you know, some articles saying good, some articles saying bad. It is true that a lot of the articles saying it's good were funded by industry, which makes you a little concerned. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you, it's really not fair to hammer it, uh, an entire. But can I tell you one thing? When the U.S. government provides tax incentives for foods, uh, and in this case, you know, you're allowed to promote whole sectors of, of foods. So you can promote meat or promote milk as an industry member, and that's something that our government sort of wants you to do. But if you have heart disease, you don't really want to get promoted to eat meat and maybe milk because right. we know that the saturated fats are an issue. So we want to, I think, pull the government out of this a little bit. We mm-hmm. want to have decisions made by us and, and not information forced down our throat and being told we're dumb for not doing it when, in fact, we're not sh- even sure if it's honestly offered. But, but, if, but what if you make the choice to eat meat and these people really are making uh, cloned meat and they're putting all the steroids and the chemicals in the meat? Like, like we're making the choice, but these people are still killing us. It's still poison. Well, you're, I, you know, I, as you know, and I've got, gotten the, the fights over this, I really do think we should label GMO foods, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you should know, mm-hmm. if you don't care about it. And in the case of meat, I don't think that there's a lot of hormones in them, but I do worry about the saturated fat, which is a, a very discernible problem in some populations. I'm a heart surgeon. I see that firsthand. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to give it a free pass, but I also want to be honest and fair about all these things. Part of what I want to do in the show this year is deconstruct food. Mm-hmm. I want to get under the hood of this. Mm-hmm. Right. In fact, today's show, I, you know, I've got the, th- the the heads of the three biggest pr- uh, chicken producers in the country: Purdue, Purdue, Tyson, and uh, I th- the third one's Bell and Evans, which is not which is a top uh, five, five. They top sell that at Whole Foods, right? Yeah, they sell it at Whole Foods. And so, I want these guys to be honest with us. First of all, is there chlorine in our chicken? Is that a problem? That's one of the accusations that were just made recently. Um, is organic really important? Why does it cost so much? Mm-hmm. Um, and, Why are you know, chicken legs so goddamn big now? Ain't no chickens yeah, in the chicken, world this huge. Yeah, I mean, how can they get so... They grow twice as big in half the time, so how do you make that happen? That stated, I do think these guys are, are hearing us. They're, all those companies I mentioned are making organic chicken now. All of them have changed the way they do a lot of their factory farming practices. It'll drive prices down because mm-hmm. you do a lot of stuff to people, it gets cheaper. So I think they're saying, listen, people are voting with their pocket three times a day. Right. And they don't want the stuff we were giving them. Mac and cheese. I'm doing an expose on that. Mac, mac and cheese used to have artificial coloring in it. Mm-hmm. But these guys heard all the complaints of moms in America. They, they started using turmeric and, and spices that have yellow colors mm-hmm. instead of coloring that has yellow colors. Because the coloring does cause behavioral changes in some kids. Not in all kids, but I in th- some. Th- so th- why bother th- Is there any nutritional value in mac and cheese anyway? Well, see, the thing is, you could make... The reason moms, you make mac and cheese, let's just be respectful, is the, to them, to their needs. They don't have a lot of time, they don't have a lot of money, and the kids like it. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's a trifecta. Yeah, but you could make mac and cheese with butternut squash, mm-hmm. with real cheese, with, you know, and get, get it, no, let the macaroni go because the kids like that, right? And, you know, but, so put that in there. And that's like a little healthier version. Mm-hmm. It's not the worst thing to give the kids. Or you can give them that with, with healthy vegetables next to it. And it, I'm okay with the combination. Right. I don't want to be a, a dictator on food choices. But don't the, be a Donald Trump on food choices. No, no, but exactly. But, but mm-hmm. I, I want people to know that this is a B selection. There's some A choices out there. That don't take much more time. If you make your if you make your butternut squash all over the weekend, right? Put them in the freezer and just grab them out of there and toss them in the pan. It'll take you the same amount of time as, as making a mac and cheese. And cheese, I always notice it says like on the packages, it'll say like artificial. Um, I was just in the supermarket the other day looking at it, and I'm like, what is real cheese? Because it'll say, it'll say like artificial... Um... Yeah. Well, American cheese is, is, is not real cheese. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just you know, food stuff. It's cheese stuff. Cheese, but it, you, it ought to, the food you eat should look the way it looked when it came out of the ground is when you eat it. Mm. Okay. That's the key goal here. Mm-hmm. And you guys, when you, in your, your, your juicing, right? When you, when you make those, you're not taking you know, processed stuff. You're taking real food. Yeah, real food. Right there in food. front food, of you. Yeah, food can fix it. It really can if you let it. And if you respect the power that it has. Now, mm-hmm. it's not just about the food mm-hmm. nutrients. It's also a little bit about the, the, the deeper sacred nature of food. It's supposed to bring us together. It's not something you're supposed to do alone by yourself when you're scared or alone and feel forgotten. It's something you bring that brings people together. That's what it's supposed to be able to do. It's, it's supposed to be a cultural foundation of our communities. And we've, t- we've turned it into some kind of functional process. And that's not right for us. Because people don't want to die. So I think they're just worried about what they put in their bodies because they feel like some of this food is actually killing us. Some of the food is killing them. But, uh, but on the other hand, 
uh, it, it, there's nothing healthier than laughing during a meal. Right. Absolutely. So it's a it's a it's a it's a combination. And the beauty of of food is that you can mature it to who you are. But I can tell you, say people over time lose interest in doing things to avoid dying. They do things because it makes them feel better right this minute. Mm. I drink one of your 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 juice drinks, and I'm trying to get more energy. I feel that that moment, which is why I come back and shop for it the next day. Mm -hmm. That's how we build health, not by torturing people and threatening them about long term issues. Right. But we need to have folks be responsive. To, to our needs. And the only way to do that is to keep making noise. And I get, I tell you, I'm, this is my ninth year of the show. I'm hearing it mm -hmm. day in and day out. I don't have to fight over kale anymore. <laughs> Kale's in. Right? Everybody not, loves kale. Yeah, now we're getting the chicken in the Now we got kale board. chips. Right. We got. So I can eat Chick fil A every day as long as I laugh while I'm eating it. No, it's 80 20 rule. 20% okay. of the time you're allowed to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. 80% of the time. Like when you guys, you get up at 3 in the morning, right? 3.30, yes. right? You, you don't want to reinvent the wheel at 3 in the morning, pick up a donut, a bagel, and some. No, you eat the same darn thing. I know what you drink. Yes. Right? You bring those two things in here, you work your way through them. That You've automated, same thing. Mm -hmm. you, you've, you've got your, your system. Whatever your system is, use it in the morning. Right. It's the breakfast club. You guys are doing this because you're eating the right breakfast. And then you know what? In the evening, if you want to play around because you're running to relax a little bit, you can go out, go to you know, go, go to go to town on it. I will say that milk is the devil, though. Like I, I, I like, I, I drink milk. My butthole is ruined. I'm yeah, you have so I'm many people are lactose long. intolerant. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, definitely I, lactose intolerant. Milk, 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 ice cream, milk, ice cream, milkshakes. Milk. I can't do dairy. Well, you, you know, there are a lot of Americans. I mean, we lose the the enzymes that break down dairy as we get older. So when you were a kid, you may have been okay. When mm -hmm. a small child, but you lost yours earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Envy's got his still going on. Yeah, I don't know where you are, but you know, I, I can drink milk, but but I usually drink it in the form of, of yogurt. And it doesn't bother me at all. But if you got an issue, you, should, you, know, you have, there are lots of other things. I, I love hemp milk. Speaking of hemp, can I show you hemp? Hemp milk. Hemp. Hemp, hemp, milk. Hemp, 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 milk. Hemp, hemp milk. I like almond milk. Like marijuana. I like, I like, milk I like I, coconut milk. Yeah, I, they're all. I like them all too. But, but my favorite is hemp milk. I like the the nuttiness of it. I never tried that. Yeah, try it out. You like it. You like the nuttiness of the milk, Doctor Oz. The nuttiness of the milk. I like to soak my nuts. You know that. <laughs> why, don't you, why, why don't we? Um, why don't we drink breast milk from humans? Well, there are people who do that. They were doing that at, the, <laughs> you know, at some of these big festivals. They apparently do that. They harvest breast milk and sell it to other folks there. So pr women really? who, are, yeah, when women who are, I was just reading the story about this. I, I, I just don't. I think there are hygienic concerns about that. Plus, women don't make as much milk as cows. Right. So mm. it's probably not going to be enough for and you. And if she's lactating, she probably needs it for. Probably needs it. The baby. I used to always drink my wife's but, breast milk when we, she have a baby. I would always drink some. It's sugary. Yeah, a little bit. Would she, would she okay. share it with with you? Usually she wouldn't work. share, but I would just like grab a nipple. I'd suck a nipple and the milk uh, would come out. I don't want to hear this. All right, let me, move on to the, <laughs> let, me, let me move on to what I think might be the biggest hypocrisy out there, which is uh, which medical marijuana and the fact that we don't use it and study it the way we should. Mm -hmm. mm. And I know a lot of folks out there think, oh, you know, marijuana is a gateway drug to, to narcotics, and I'm going to do this on Thursday, sh uh, Friday show. But I think that, that, our, that marijuana may be the exit door to our opiate epidemic. Really? And I'm shocked that we are using opiates as much as we do. When and I just learned, and I'm a you know I'm a, I used to prescribe a lot of these. Uh, I'm shocked to learn that narcotics have not been shown to work well, opioids and the like, for chronic pain. I always thought they worked for chronic pain. The trade-off was it was addictive. It turns out we were prescribing something that probably wouldn't work, and getting people addicted to it. So Percocets aren't good for the pain. Not chronic pain. They okay. work for you. You stub it your toe. It works temporarily. Yeah, you, you mm -hmm. have a tooth pulled. You just had surgery. Just had a baby. And then when it heals on its own, and you don't feel the pain. Right. But if it's chronic, if you have chronic long-term knee pain, you start to, or back pain, or headaches, or or something else going down, mm -hmm. and you're taking narcotics every day for a couple of weeks, we've not been able to show that over a course of a year it's effective. And it does because it addicts you. It actually makes you hypersensitive. So you, when you try to get off it, the pain's even worse than it ever was. And then you probably get immune to it and need to take more of it. Yes, you, and in you order get, and, for it to be effective. And you can't afford it, so you start taking heroin. Mm -hmm. So that's the norm, and that's not good. But marijuana can't kill you. It doesn't block your respiratory receptors, so you don't suffocate the way you would with opiates. And what bothers me, and this is infuriating, is that we know that doctors more and more are believing it might have a role. But the federal government, the DEA, mm -hmm. Drug Enforcement Agency, and I, they feel a cultural pressure not to allow what states are asking to happen, which is to allow doctors to prescribe it. Right. So I think we need to get the DEA, who probably want to move out of the way anyway, to get out of the way and let this stuff happen. Because right now, when it's a scheduled class one drug, you, you, you can't, it's hard to research it. Mm -hmm. And I do think it can help. I've, I've read mm -hmm. some papers already showing that it helps wean people off narcotics. Because you're not putting them on another narcotic. You're getting them off narcotics all the way. And it might have help people with chronic pain issues better than narcotics would have. Montel Williams is coming on to talk about it passionately. Mm -hmm. You know, Montel's a Marine, talk show host, successful business person, mm -hmm. bad MS, bad pain, only gets through his day with 
with medical marijuana. He doesn't get high. He gets medical marijuana. He gets high. He's, he got, yeah, he, but he doesn't get high from that. He does, what, what do you mean? mean? You he doesn't get, get high aside from when he has yeah, to. He, he, does, he has lo, it's low, low oh, dose he has THC. Pain, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Right? The, marijuana is three different things. Three different compounds, the elements to it, and one of them makes you high. You actually don't want a lot of that, so you have le- low levels of THC, more of the cannabinols, more of the terpenes, and so you get a physical benefit without being discombobulated, which mm-hmm. is what you want. And again, it should be a doctor deciding if you would benefit from that. And we need to free, take the handcuffs off the, the medical profession, and let the research also be done to prove that what I'm saying is right or prove that it's not right, because I don't know for sure either. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading small little reports here and there, cobbling together. But the like, kids with seizures seem to benefit. Who wants to prevent a child from getting better from that? Right. People dying of cancer over and over again have terrible pain. Why would I not get them get treated? Why put them on high-dose narcotics and knock them out? Let them enjoy their last months with their family. Yeah, if you're dying of cancer, you might as well get high. Yeah. You well, think it's a financial purpose I think, behind all that? I, th- I think historically, the the the, the, the rap on, on marijuana was racial. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were probably some beliefs that there was a cultural rotting out that would happen if you let people get high. And I'm not in favor of recreational marijuana. I think that's a whole separate conversation. I worry about young kids thinking they got to smoke pot to relax and get through life. That's mm. a, that, it's, like, it's not physical addiction, it's, immen- it's emotional I addiction. Agree. So I, that, that, that's a big concern of mine. I'm not talking about that, I want to be clear about that. But why put law enforcement in the awkward spot of having to uh, you know, uh, arrest someone who has cancer because we've got a rule that, uh, that they can't have it in your state, even though you go across the state border and it's okay. We don't want to create those, those problems. Yeah, Montel told us that he can't even get out of bed. Yeah, unless, he unless he smokes, smokes, yeah. a, smokes a joint or blunt or whatever. I, 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 I knew Montel before he was doing this regularly. The guy was incapacitated. I met him back with Oprah. Wow. And this was more than 10 years ago. The, I, I went to Vegas with him to look at these pot facilities. Uh, the guy is un, unhindered. He's moving around. He's more nimble than I am. How does, Oprah feel about medical, how does Oprah feel about medical marijuana? I haven't, I haven't asked her. I'm going to see her. Though. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. Does Oprah smoke weed? Does she smoke weed? I've never seen you smoke weed. Charlemagne <laughs> is cool with Gail now. That's the homie. You are. <laughs> yes. I love her. I love Gail. She's great. That's the homie. Yeah. What would, about people who suffer from anxiety? Can marijuana help with that? Because I know people who feel like they're very anxious and have been on medication. Nope, it but can't. Then, but then saying that <laughs> marijuana actually helps a lot more. So it, not when I smoked it. Yeah, it, so it depends. Again, marijuana is not one thing. It's it's a, it's an herb, mm-hmm. and it comes in different forms. So you know, the sativas are different. No, right? don't talk so, about it. So there's <laughs> so, so some 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 marijuana will get you hyper agitated right. and paranoid. Wrong doses of the stuff will also do that. It's a it's a drug. Mm-hmm. You got to treat it like a drug. So and, but some of them some some types of marijuana when, uh, actually could relax you and could help you sleep. And I know there mm-hmm. there's a guy that I met who runs one of these businesses who only smokes. Uh, or you actually uses the the the, um, the, the uh, vapor only uses it at night just before he goes to bed to get to sleep. Okay. He won't use it during the daytime. He doesn't want to be so he's not a, he's not, a he's not addicted to pot. He uses it as his sleep aid. You would rather use that than sleeping pills. You're much well. First of all, sleeping pills were designed for two weeks of help. They're not designed for months and months and months. They're not a chronic solution. And the average sleeping pill gives you about eight to ten minutes more sleep a night. So you're not talking about hours more of beautiful sleep. It helps you fall asleep. Mm-hmm. But the total amount of sleep isn't quite as much you might think it is. Right. I'm not, I don't know if marijuana is a solution either. There. <laughs> but again, why would we? Why are we guessing? Right. Wouldn't we want to sort of know this? Do some research. research. Yeah. Figure this out. I, I mean, I, 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 I smoked some weed because I thought my I, like I was having anxiety and I was in L. A. and I thought it helped my anxiety, but I ended up smoking sativa, put my anxiety through the roof. Uh, yeah. It was the worse. worst thing. On the other hand, some types of pot make you more creative, and it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. So we we got to study it. Mm-hmm. If, it's, right. if, if there's stuff that gets you past your anxiety, make you more creative, make you calm, make you uh, uh, psyched up, whatever it might be, this is one of the oldest medications out there probably. I mean, this stuff has been growing from all over the place, mm-hmm. and they're very different. They, depending on the temperature they're at, how much light they see, what kind of water they have, they have different amounts of chemicals. It's going to become like a more traditional right. pharmaceutical. They're going to know exactly how much each of the chemicals are in there, and they're going to prescribe for, you know, for different people different products. It's got to be here for a reason, right? I mean, it's from the earth. And like, people people been using it forever. Well, people doctor it, though. A lot of people doctor it. It's not just they... Yeah, that's what I don't like. I don't like when man yeah. takes things in their own hand, because that's like GMO weed. Yes. And, the, mm-hmm. the, and modern weed is very different than it was you know, a generation ago. It's got a lot more of the the stuff that makes you high, the THC. It's actually... It's America. People think more is better. And more is not better. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and why let a bunch of folks who are not credentialed figure this out? Because mm-hmm. this happened anyway. Right, the states legalize it. People who really aren't qualified are figuring all this stuff out, and or making it up, or marketing it out. And I, you know, look, I like Snoop, and I, you know, I enjoy his company, <laughs> but I don't want that, his brand of pot to be the defining quality metric in pot. True. We want doctors to be saying, "Hey, listen, for childhood seizures, so your child isn't in any way incapacitated. Here's what we want to give you." 
And this right. is what works the best in five-year-old little kids. You know, that's what that's what scares me too with a lot of those weed shops, especially like you know, you go to one I went to one in Vegas and they have everything. Yeah. You know, food, brownies, cookies, you name it, and then they have different you know, this one can is this much and this one is that much. And I'm thinking to myself, who's measuring it? Because if you look in the back, it's just homeboy chopping yeah. stuff up and putting in the thing. I'm like, they can't possibly know what's in each one. I just want the one that's good for erections. Yeah, but you don't know that. You can get the one that puts the erections is there, down. Is there, weed? <laughs> is there weed that's good for erections? Yeah. Not, no. <laughs> he said, yeah. Darn it. <laughs> Now food you got... can fix it. Now, food can fix an erection. Now, what can you eat if you need an erection? Uh, asparagus. Uh, well, oysters have zinc in them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> zinc helps with testosterone. Mm-hmm. Could, could come in handy. I thought asparagus that is a makes fact. your urine stink. My wife makes asparagus stink. all the time. It does make your urine stink, but I keep a heart on. I, I, I think what the about asparagus, oysters? That's, the... yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oysters yeah. have zinc in them. Mm-hmm. Zinc, it's, oh, the, it's the biggest source of zinc. Is, and you can, get, you can get canned oysters now. That are to die for. <laughs> they are to try them out. They're the canned best. Oysters. So instead yeah, of Viagra, get canned oysters. Yeah, canned. They come in little cans. Like, like, like sardines, but they're oysters. Mm-hmm. And they're so good. So trust me, if you guys haven't had them, you're going to love them. Put a little toothpick in there. And they're, they don't cost anything. They're really cheap. <laughs> really? Okay. And they make you dick hard. Oh my That's goodness. a good Sorry. advertisement for Dr. oyster commercial. Dr. Charlemagne. Mm-hmm. Okay. Canned Charlemagne. Oyster commercial. You see these oysters? They make your dick hard. Dr. Oz yes. is back on your TV for ninth season, and of course, his book, Food Can Fix It. Right. Now, what about craziness? Can you fix his crazy ass? What can we give him? I'm going to gonna sedate him. I tell you, I'm, you I'm serious. Ass. Yeah, Dr. Charlemagne. How do you start your morning? That's how most great Dr. nights at Bill Cosby House start. What do you have in the morning? With sedation. Okay. Uh, if I get up first thing in the morning, I, I drink uh, uh, a little water uh, mm-hmm. with, with some lemon juice in it because it gets the gastric juices flowing. I don't have any coffee or tea or anything else. Then I have a, a cup of yogurt. Pahe yogurt with some blueberries in it, typically, mm-hmm. or some blackberries. And then I'll have nuts at around, uh, you know, 10.30 just before I go out and do the, uh, sorry, 9.30 just before I go out and do my show. My first show I tape at 10 o'clock. Have you had nuts yet? I don't have my nuts yet. But it's oh, just about time. Oh, he has some for you. <laughs> I, I got some for you, though. I got in my bag. I brought some. I knew I was going to have them there. And, uh, and then, I, then, I, then lunch is sort of automated, too. But by the, and then in the afternoon, I have chocolate. Which okay, is the I'm not, dark chocolate? Dark chocolate, eighty percent cocoa or better, and I think it's better than, than coffee because it gives you a little bit of that bitterness too. That's good mm. to yeah. know. And then dinner, whatever. It's like nuts and dark chocolate. You a Kardashian? Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> God darn. Am I looking bigger to you back there? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not turning my back on him anymore. Food can be careful. <laughs> Food can fix it, ladies and gentlemen. Doctor Oz, we appreciate you for joining us. The new book is out. What September twenty sixth? September twenty yeah, sixth. Yeah, that's okay. good. Oh, that's my mama's birthday. Oh, All right. it's a good day to be born. By her mom, by, by your she mama. Was made on, she was made on New Year's Eve. Right, I always trace that back. Yeah, you yeah. always wonder. There's so many people. If you're out there it's listening. September. There are a lot of folks born between now and October 7th, and mm-hmm. they're all New Year's Eve babies. So mm-hmm. something went down there in your family all those years ago. The holidays, yeah. just Christmas and on. I know. It's a good time <laughs> to make babies. And new season of the show starts when? Just started. Just okay. And we're doing yeah. well. Yeah, we gotcha. had uh, we, we had a oh, big OJ show. I had OJ's lawyer, um, Malcolm Laverne, come on. Talk, and he got him, you know, got him out on parole, talking about what's going on with OJ. And he sent me a message from OJ. Really? Oh, OJ, so, so OJ watches, I don't know if you know, you guys all know this, but in prisons, they have to watch network television. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably the most male-friendly show on daytime. So all the prisoners watch my show. Mm. Right, I so, bet. O, so OJ was sending me notes about the show. And he saw a show that I did on NFL and head injuries. And he was wondering if that may have happened to him. Are you going to perhaps sit down with OJ? Are we in talks I, for I, that? I may sit down with him. Wow. We're, 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 Do we know the date that he's getting out? Any, sometime after October 1st. Okay, I know they have like eight different locations where he could be released because they don't want the paparazzi. I know, they want him to sort of sneak away. But there are people really angry about him. Chris Darden came on. Chris Darden's the prosecuting lawyer back in Los Angeles who just has been destroyed by this trial. He said, listen, if I did my job right, this man would be in handcuffs for the rest of his life. Now, mm-hmm. He said, if you saw that murder scene, he said it was the most heinous criminal scene. He did. He's been, like, he did lots of murder trials. he never seen anything like it before. Wow. And he said that that's the kind of thing I could never allow a man to go free after having done that. And he mm-hmm. says, I think he's guilty. Wow. We That's talked about crazy. the glove too, you know the the glove gambit. Mm-hmm. You know if it don't fit, you must have quit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know why would he do that? OJ may have had arthritis. He did have arthritis, but maybe he, he stopped taking his pain meds, so it's possible his hands swelled up. Damn. Which and OJ killed them people, man. Like everybody needs to stop playing, allegedly. But allegedly. I still say allegedly. Said, but he yeah, killed those people. Stop allegedly. It. Okay. And it's probably weighing on him mentally bad right now. Well, we'll see. He said he's a, he seems to be in good spirits, and he, you know, he says, "Listen, I put the past behind me. It's the only way I can focus on the future." That's the message I got from his lawyer. Wow. Is there anybody on the show you don't personally like? Of course, mm-hmm. got people. I had a guy on who liked shaming heavy women. Charlemagne. 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 He's gonna be on the yeah, show. Yeah, he's been on a few times. I don't like shaming heavy women. Yes, you I do. I just like women to be healthy. 
I, I, you don't I like people to be healthy. Yeah, you don't shame health. There, there are people who actually do shame women. That's him. No, no, no he doesn't. No, I like people to be healthy. Yeah, he, but, t- he tells people that they're fat, they're going to die, all kinds of stuff. You are, though. I don't think why you should. Why do we act like when you're heavy, that's not, that don't put you at greater because, risk for these things? Because the only fat that puts you at risk is the fat in your belly. So if you got big thighs or bat wings, that doesn't cost you. You may lose a date here and there, but who the heck cares? And, <laughs> date, you know, and I, also, you yeah. don't know the struggle that people are going through. They yeah, might they might have been a lot bigger, lost weight, and now they're yes. still on that journey. And telling, calling somebody that might actually discourage them. I, I, for sure it hurts them. And also, you know, it, 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 nobody wants to be heavy. Right. If they're heavy, there's... Like, one of the most provocative interviews I've ever had was with a woman I really do uh, like. And uh, I'll just say, Rosie O'Donnell, mm-hmm. I like her a lot. And on the show, she said, listen, you know, I, I had been abused as a child. I didn't mm-hmm. want to see my sexuality. So for her, it was a protective mechanism. Mm. So she got fat to cover her well, no, not, vagina. She was speaking on behalf of a lot of women who do it for that reason. Mm-hmm. They, don't, they don't want to be seen, so they hide. Now, right. she's lost weight. She looks great. And, you know, I'm a big fan of hers. And I really treasure the fact she spoke out of something that I know is more common than that. Right. And I think we need to respect the fact that people are in there wherever their journey is. But telling people that they're heavy when they sort of know it already. You know, the worst thing, we, a lot of women don't go to a doctor because they go in there. They, they have and, to weigh themselves. They have to weigh themselves. Mm-hmm. And the nurse goes, ah, uh, she's 216. And everyone in the waiting room turns around. You sort of look walking out naked with your little gown on. Well, that's, you know. Right. That's and there's also people who turn to food because they were maybe, you know, I, I see neglected all these as a excuses. child. See, I, they, that's I, what they turn to. But it's to. all these different excuses. I hate people there complaining are. about things that they can actually change. How about stop making excuses and go try to change it? There's people who suffer from depression. See, it's all it is. But, no, but some people true. just eat a lot. There's people yeah. who are on medication that cause them my line, to Majority of people who are fat are because of why. Well, they, they eat too they much. But the question, is, but the question, but why? Yeah. yeah, but that question is the why. Now, I mean, the, the diagnosis that they're heavy is obvious. But so, like, as an example, the poop in our gut probably deter- determines the, the obesity in some people. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, you take rats, feed them the same amount of money of, of food, same amount of food, but you put different bacteria in their guts. Guess what you get? Mm-hmm. One, some are fat, some are skinny. So we, there's an experiment being done right now in humans where they're taking thin people's uh, uh, poop. And try and put it in heavy people and see if it makes a difference. What? Yeah, because you put it in. <laughs> what? Your poop, you outsource digestion. Mm-hmm. Your poop doesn't does does that is made by bacteria in your gut digesting your food. So some people may have bacteria that naturally makes them thinner. So and, they're putting that bacteria into yes. And in rats, it works. Mm, in that's rodents, it works. So it could work. This thing called acromancia. It's a bacteria made when you eat uh, cranberries and the like. Mm-hmm which seems to help with infections and all. Mm-hmm. And, and again, it, it might be one of the reasons, and it seems to help with calories too. Mm-hmm. So we may be able to change how you absorb your food, and that actually may send different messages to your body so you don't hold on to the fat. So yes, it's too many calories, but the question is why too many calories? That's what we gotta figure out. So. And, I, and I think when it comes to messaging, instead of giving people all of these reasons why they are fat, give them reasons why it's, it's, okay, it's good not to be fat. I think they know why. Yeah. No, not really. Tell them the benefits of it. I think what well, the best thing to do is to make it easy for them to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. If you make it easier for folks, they'll come along with you. So when I take away all the foods you want to eat and don't give you anything back, that's not helping you much. Right. If I give you foods that you, that you might love so much, you'd eat them every day, and oh, by the way, you'll get skinny eating them or feel better eating them, that works. Mm-hmm. And most people who, you guys probably all say, if I ask you, is it hard to stay in shape like where you are? You're all probably going to say, well, n- not really. I don't have to work at it. I don't work at it every no, minute. No, you have to work at it. Yeah, yeah, but you're not working at every, you're not thinking about it every minute of every day. I am. No, no, you, you've got, you've automated. You get up in the morning, you get those little two glasses of stuff and you're off to work and you don't even think about that. But I'm, I'm automated about the gym. I yeah. got to go to the gym three, four times a week. Yes. You automate certain stuff. I get, I know it's not easy, but it's not dominating your life. Right. For people who are overweight, they think they have to think, take every second of every minute. There's all kinds of apps, mm-hmm. that everything you, yeah. you record, I mean, I, every little thing. And it's also access. I feel like in certain neighborhoods, like the reason why we did the juice bar was because we wanted something healthy, but you'll see a fried chicken spot, a pizza spot, all this stuff. Spot, but you have right. to leave your neighborhood in order to go find something healthy. I rode my bike from uh, New York to Montauk one year mm-hmm. as part of a to, to deal with some friends. Mm-hmm. And I hit Queens. And I went the entire way through Queens, you know, a borough that I love. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see a fresh food stand. Right. And I and I, and I know there are fresh food stands there. I just the road that I took didn't happen to have any at all. I bet you didn't see nobody riding on their bikes either. No, kids don't play outside no more. That's one of the yeah. problems too. Physical well, for activity ki- for kids that's a big issue. And that's actually in, 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 for, 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 it's the one exception to the rule of activity because you cannot exercise out of obesity. Mm-hmm. You lose weight based on eating better. You keep your weight down by exercising. Mm. So kids are the exception. Because, you know, seven-year-olds can burn so many calories, they can't put weight on. And we don't let them play. We got to make play dates for them. Right. They got to be coordinated. You guys all know this. You, you, know, mm-hmm. that, you know, taking your beautiful kids to do a friend's house for a 20-minute play date when it takes 45 minutes to get them there, it's not worth it. Right. It, it, I used to tell my kids, part of the reason I live in Jersey 
It's how the kids go outside and backyard, play. Backyard, yeah. Just get the heck out. Get yeah. out of the house. Don't Absolutely. come back till it's dark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <Bye. laughs> Goodbye. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. As always, our resident doctor and yours too, Dr. Oz. Bye, my friends. book, Food Can Fix It, Pick It Up. September 26th. And it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 